again, InterVarsity. Welcome to part three of your NSO training. We're actually going to take a step back from talking about NSO specific things and talk briefly about incarnational ministry. Over the past several years, our chapter has put a lot of effort into in, to developing a dorm based ministry. Why? Because that's what the guy we're following did. God wanted to reach humans. So what did he do? He became one and lived among us. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood, John 1.14 says in the message. We want to reach college students, so what do we do? We live with them. And that often means dorm ministry. Now, Katie, you might be thinking, I've got to live somewhere on campus. Just because I live in a dorm doesn't mean I have an incarnational ministry there. And you would be right. God didn't take on flesh to float down the Jordan in an, in an inflatable pool chair, sipping on pina coladas and waving hi to his cousin John as he baptized sinners in the Jordan. Being human enabled Jesus to reveal, to rescue, to restore, but it didn't do the work for him. Similarly, you can live with your roommate on your floor and in your building for years and not have an ounce of influence for Christ if all you did was pay enough attention to people, to the people around you so as not to offend. It will take an open heart, an open door, and a good amount of intentional relationship building and prayer for us to really be representatives of Jesus in our respective housing communities, apartment buildings, and neighborhoods. But when we do, not only do we get to experience the sweet pleasure that God takes in our obedience, but our hearts will be molded to look more like our fathers, and we have the immense joy of seeing lost men and women on our campus start their journeys back home. It's really cool. We've already been seeing it in Newing and Dickinson and in, in communities around campus, and I'm just super excited to keep it going. So if you're going to live incarnationally in your dorm, the best time to start is at the very beginning, the day that you move in before people break into cliques, before you start counterproductive habits, and while people are still open to going to new things and meeting new people. When I got to Binghamton, as a freshman, I didn't know anybody. I was desperate to make friends. You know how at, uh, at freshman orientation, like you meet somebody in a line, and then they're your new best friend for the next 24 hours, and you eat every meal with them? That's what I was like. We could be those friends for people. Um, incarnational living isn't an NSO event, but because so much of the hospitality that we have to offer to people will be best received at the beginning of the school year, that's why I wanted to include it in this training. Um, so for, I guess for incarnational ministry training, I just wanted to give you guys some suggestions of what, of what's, um, what we've done in the past to be able to, to build relationships and, um, to build relationships and reach out to our dorms. Uh, now I have to find them. Uh, okay, so the following are just some suggestions and things that I've done with my lovely roommates, Florence and Joanna, in the past three years that I've lived in Newing. And I pray that God will use them to get your creative juices flowing um, and that you would let your light so shine before men from Bingham to Choconut, from Marcy to Campus Plaza, and from Cayuga to downtown Binghamton and everywhere in between. Also, if you, after you, after I talk about these, I know you guys might have ideas or things that you've been doing in your own dorms or that might work more uh, better in non-corridor style dorms where I live. So go ahead and post them on the discussion board below. So the first one is to go to your hall meeting, meetings and to learn your hall mates names. A lot of people skip out on these, but I think it's the best way at the beginning of the year to get to know the people that you live with. Also, it's kind of a, a vote of support for your RA and can help you build a good relationship with them. Um, offer people help in things that you're good at. If you're a computer whiz, you can offer that. You have a car, you can offer rides. Um, if you're a nursing major, you can say, hey, I got band-aids if you if you ever need them. Um, but yeah, but but don't be afraid to, to offer people help and then to ask people for help if you need it. 
uh, I guess uh, a third suggestion would be to keep your door open. Because if you say, hey, if you ever need help with your computer, just ask me, they'll be a lot more likely to take you up on that offer if when they walk by they see you hanging out in your room because your door is open. Um, you can uh, come bearing gifts. I know my mom often makes cookies for me before I go to school so I can offer them to my hallmates. Uh, post IV flyers on your on your windows and door. Now granted, if you, if you stopped by my room in the past two years, you might have thought we went a little bit overboard with this, but it's free for publicity, it works. And you know what they say, they will know we are Christians by our bumper stickers and our doors. Okay, they don't really say that, but it can help. <laughs> My friend Kiris is here right now and she's laughing at me because I'm such a nerd. Okay, uh, be especially sensitive to international students on your hall. Stop and chat with them, offer to correct an English paper, and have them teach you something from home. Some international students will already be really involved perhaps with their ethnic community on campus and not really be interested in, in making other friends, but a lot of people will be really receptive to having an American friend or someone that they know and trust who lives near them. Uh, pray for and with people. If you see folks having a rough time, offer to pray with them. If, you, um, if you're on a housing team, Meet together and pray regularly, and then you can invite uh, invite your friends to come and reassure them, hey, you know those kids down the hall that you see me hanging out with? We get together every night and pray pray for people. Uh, do you have anything that we can be praying for you about? Or we'll, I'll make sure that we pray about that for, uh, for you tonight. Um, and then the last one, this is my favorite. I'm sneaking it in there, but go to evangelism training or read up on evangelism so that you're very, better prepared um, to, to guide people along, uh, to guide people and guide your friends along a spiritual journey. I think, uh, I think training isn't a cure-all and it's the Holy Spirit that draws people to, to Jesus, not cleverly cha uh, trained college students. But it, I, my guess, I think my experience has been that when you, when you are well trained, um, you're much more likely to, to let the spirit use you in partnership with evangelism, and you're a little less freaked out by it. Um, so after reading this, please continue on, look at the NSO events sheet, and then take the survey on monkeysurvey.com. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks, or not a couple weeks, a couple days. I leave for campus and on Wednesday. So I hope to, I look forward to seeing you all there. Bye.